Hello everyone, it's I80386SX and it's time for more vintage computer videos. Today we have the Compact Perlinia 425S with no cover at the moment. The drive I had in here I think is starting to die and I was trying to troubleshoot the CD-ROM. All sorts of errors, all sorts of problems. So that's why we're partially open and incomplete. But for the time being, we have a bar bed on our hands. Can we put wireless internet or even wireless networking on this early 486? Unless this turns into an embarrassment, this video will go up regardless. And before I go into that, there are a handful of ways that you can do this. Or and do this as in put wireless on a computer. And I don't have any fancy thing to put text on a screen, so we're going to use WordPad to prove my point here. We're fancy here. This Windows install is literally two two months old, or not even months, two hours old. I can't even keep track of time today. Right, let's see. So the first way we could do is a PCIe card. The second way is just a simple PCI card. Third way is USB. PCM CIA. Uh, definitely not a crad bud or catter or whatever you want to call that. Okay, so that's really the five that I can think of off the top of my head. There may be others in play that I'm just not thinking about. So, let's cross off the ones that don't work. So, PCIe, that hasn't even been a thing till 2003. That one can go. PCI, there's no PCI ports on a ProLinea, or most 486s for that matter. So that one can go. No PCI slots means no USB. No PCI slots means no card bus of any variety. You notice that I skipped over one. I skipped over PCMCIA. That is technically a laptop card. And for any normal circumstances, that card, this would be crossed off the list. And we would be having a very short video. But notice we are making a video that's going to be longer than three minutes. We'll just zoom out here and maybe you will see what we have here. I'll give it a second. Did you find it? Well, that's okay if you didn't. If you skip to the three minute 20 mark, Good for you. It's this is our secret right here. It's this card that's on top. This will allow you to put PCM CIA cards in a computer. There's PCI versions of this floating around all over the place. This particular card, I believe, cost me 14 bucks. So they're still readily available. So what does that lead us next? Now we gotta find a PCM CIA card. We're in luck. We have this Aeronet 340 series, which supposedly works with Windows 95. Actually, we have proven that this worked with Windows 95. That's a, that was an earlier bar bet. That video is available on my channel as well. But we, the difference between that video and this one is one, obviously we're using a desktop, and two, we use a compact LTE 5280, which is a far faster machine. So, I'm not going to put the card in just yet. I did a little prep work before we did anything here. So let us install that software. I did take the liberty to copy this file onto this computer beforehand so we don't have an hour and a half disaster. Or at least 
attempt to not have an hour and a half disaster. Ah, oh, that drive is almost full already. Unreal. I also did use Windows 95C. So, we'll just start this up. And we will unzip. We are, we are cooking, maybe. All right, so I think it put it in Windows Temp. So let's go there, let's install the utility if it allows us to do that. It did make its own folder, so that'll make things a little tiny bit easier. We'll install the utility first. If it allows us to do that, we shall see. dare try to mount this thing into my mount. And I ran absolutely no updates whatsoever on this machine. So this is Windows 95C right out of the box. You can't get any more fresh than that, or at least darn close to it. I think the use of a 486 by this self may make this and, uh, an hour and a half uh, disaster, but we'll see. I have no idea what it just did. through this nonsense and we'll create the icon lever to assist you I don't have any radius server so I'm gonna just have to check that option after all a bar bet video is will it work not doesn't have to be perfect not best practice Provided that the install goes good, I will put the card in at the conclusion of the install here. I did attempt to install the Linksys version 3 on the 
old hard drive in Windows 95A and the computer absolutely wanted nothing to do with it and then the hard drive started squeaking and slowing way down so maybe a correlation there I don't know let's hope for some better results Beautiful. So, the card, as soon as this uh, closes out, will now go in. I do have RAM coming for this thing, so it max it out to the 32 megabytes, so it'll run a little bit faster, hopefully by the end of the week. Once again, here is our card. If you can tell to the very left, try to do this one handed. My card is in, but we have a whole lot of nothing. So maybe we gotta force its hand here. I don't know which one would be faster if we do the automatic device. Oh, hold on here. We have a problem. We actually have two problems, but... No, we are not using a PC card to install Windows. We're not going to review anything. And we're going to shut down our computer. Computer is now off. The sound of those old sea gates is just so strangely satisfying. So simple, yet so satisfying. never understood with this computer I cannot get the Windows 95 logo to come up on it for the life of me and not entirely sure why it doesn't bother me enough to investigate further appear that there's any lights on the card yet and even if I did bring it around it's very hard to tell just where this card is sitting in this particular machine That looks like a good sign to at least installing something.
very, very slow. Like I said, it's a bare minimum machine right now. For any of those that are wondering, I did try a couple combinations of the compact flash to IDE converters that exist, and I have had no success getting them to actually be sustainable. One wasn't even detected on the machine, and the other one allowed you to work with the drive, but it didn't have any system capabilities. Anywho, so, here's the card. So, with no surprise at all, we gotta browse for this thing. So we go to C, temp directory, driver, Windows 95, PCM. So far, so good. I see a problem, but let's give this thing a name. We need to get some TCP IP going in here, otherwise we're not going to get any, really get anywhere, so I don't have any other systems running IPS, SPX, or NetBuoy. that and I absolutely hate that it does this. At least allow you the browse for a directory, shall we? And yeah, this is exactly what happened when I copied and pasted this path. Unless this is leaving some extra spaces somewhere. It's not So, I am going to cheat. You can always delete these once we're said and done here. Another step we gotta do. The joys of setting up a fresh computer. There we go. Ah, okay. I have no idea what I did. Control A. Control C. doesn't like co they copy and pasted the path or it doesn't like the file size name the length I'm not sure but we're getting somewhere how far we're getting is yet to be seen as while we're waiting I'm gonna plug in my router that I have set in web security. Little disclaimer yet again is that our best videos do not necessarily go according to best practice. It is simply, does it work? And why I'm doing web security is because that's all this card can do. It's the highest it can go for security wise. And you want to be running, this is 2021, so if you can get away with running WPA3 security, that would be great, otherwise WPA2 is what we should be doing.
Okay, yes, we do want to keep that file. And the router we're using is a Linksys WRT54G with the DDWRT firmware on it. If I were able, if the cords were long enough on it, I would bring it into the video, but no such luck. This should surprise absolutely no one, but it's time for a reboot. That's a good sign. For those that are new to this channel, that beep means that a PCM CIA card is in and active. You'll hear it on Windows 95 laptops as well. Okay, so. No DHCP. Uh, let's see if I can get away with that. And we need to enter at least a username. Windows 95 and it's great security. I don't care. It's at the end of this video, this card is coming out anyway. Before we do anything else, let's see if the card is properly detected in the device manager. PCMCA uh, Cisco Systems 340 Series card. So the card itself is detected properly and working properly in this Compact Pro Lydia 425S. So, so far, so good. Now it comes down to the utility. Will that work? This could make or break this video. And... Let's get a new profile going. And client name. So, not the most user-friendly piece of the hardware, but... So, that's my name of my network that we're going to be connecting to. I'm going to leave all of that alone. We like diversity here. And we have security type that says none. We're going to use static web. So, that technically is security.
What? Oh, my bad. Let's try that on size. And let's see what the status is. And we have current profile default. We have a current link speed. We are associated. We have a single strength of excellent. So now, let's see if we have an IP address. Renew. Look at that. So our next step, we're gonna load, we're gonna try and ping Google. And for all you newbies out there, there is no CMD in Windows 95. It is just called command. I believe command, the full-blown DOS command, still exists in 32-bit versions of Windows 7. Don't hold me to that. And we are able to ping Google. So now I'm going to do the final leg of my tour here. Hmm. Do I want to do this? You will notice there was a second installer that I copied over from that CD early in the video. I don't feel good about using Internet Exploder, so we're going to put the realest web browser this thing will accept, Netscape. If it takes too long, we'll have some magic of video editing to do, but if it don't, we'll see. I have no idea how well that's going to handle on this 486. Netscape Navigator 3.0 only required a 386 processor. This one requires a little bit more. We'll do a bare minimum install. While that's doing that, I'll free up a little hard drive space. Wow. Maybe that was a mistake. <laughs> We're expecting a lot out of this poor Seagate drive. And yes, to make a sad joke, these are your father's computers. And who knows, the memory upgrade by itself may significantly improve the performance of this machine. And we may have no choice but to free up space from the get-go here, so... an hour away from making this an hour and a half disaster. Yeah. 
Just waiting patiently. Right, knock on wood. This drive is performing much better than the ST3250A that may or may not be going or may have had a bad fluke. I'm not sure. I'm going to delete everything but these files. That hurt. I'm hoping the CAV files are all I need should I ever have to install anything from Windows, but hopefully by the time that part comes around, I'll have a replacement CD-ROM for this thing and in the off event that these aren't it. We pretty much did all the cleanup we possibly can with this. So we'll close this out. This is Netscape Communicator 4.7, so this is a much newer version than that I was going for, but but all right, so we're ready to go there. And we are going to go custom because I know this includes some extra crap like real player and I'm not interested in real player. So get rid of all this junk. Sorry, it's junk. Oop. Yeah, I'm not worried about any of that. In the off event that I need that stuff for this vintage of a machine, I will come back and install it. Yep. Sounds good to me. Oh, I should pay attention, or this will turn into an hour and a half disaster.
Perhaps I maybe should have done this before the video started, but, well, what are you gonna do? Whole fifth of this entire installation is a web browser executable. How about that? Oh yes, Java. Can't live without it, can't live without it. But at the end of the day, if we get onto any kind of internet, this bar bet will be considered successful. Well, we got a fifth of the installer is the Netscape ex executable, half of it's Java. Imagine they get rid of that Java. This would be a much smaller thing. Got some AOL crap. That'll probably be the rest of the installer, being knowing my luck. Ah, I guess wrong. Yeah, registry takes a while to update apparently. It might actually take several minutes.
Ah, we're getting somewhere. As bad as the registry stop. Maybe the critting icon should take several minutes. But I don't think this browser is entirely made for optimized for a four a six, so we might experience some lulls during our like you see here. Let's hope this is the end. Yeah, we don't need to read me, right? And setup is complete. That's always good. I imagine I can do some cleanup here even more down the road by getting rid of AOL Instant Messenger. All right, let's give her a go. This is a moment of truth. Half the battle is trying to get to a website that actually still works in Netscape Communicator. There is a project called ProtoWeb out there that does give you the experience of the 90s internet, but I'm not gonna go over that in this video. Okay, create a new profile. I'm just gonna go through this real fast. No email address, default's good enough. And I don't need, there's never gonna be any email on this computer ever, so. At least not while it's in my possession, and who knows, somebody might steal this thing, or it might go on to somebody else, and they may dare, dare try to do that. I don't know.
Look at that. This little poor thing is just going using everything in its power to to run this little browser. So far so good, right? Let's keep it simple. Let's try Google. It's connecting to the internet, so that's good, right? It's a very messy page, but again, a bar bet is, will it work? Not, will it work well? Let's try to search for my go-to trees. That might be, oh, there we go. So we got images of trees, we got links to click on. I doubt that any of them are going to work with the modern internet, but we'll give it a go. Let's see if the Arbor Day Foundation, nope. Nature Hills, nope. Whatever I just clicked on, nope. Britannica. Pretty sure I just butchered the pronunciation of that. Well, that one's giving us the old college try, but is it going to go anywhere? I don't feel great about this. Oh, I don't know where it gets the idea that I'm in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, but I am in Wisconsin, but not in Two Rivers. Oh, I don't know. Looks like it wants to try to do something, but... But anywho, I think we proved our point here. It is getting to the internet. So I think that does, if it gets that far, I say this is a success story. So just for one more time, I know this is a shell of the Prolinea 425S, but you can tell with the compact sticker on there, it is 486 based. Okay, technically Pentium Overdrive, but who's counting little technicalities with the Cisco Aeronet 340. And I don't know, oh yeah, you can tell there's some lights blinking on it. I just have to position just right. And that's it, so. Wireless on a 486 based desktop and almost a lost phone in the process. So that leaves it up to, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, constructive criticism, please feel free to leave those in the comments.